Hi, my name is Yang, and I'm a postdoc in UCLA. I'll be presenting our work, HBM Connect, a high-performance HLS interconnect for FPGA HBM. High bandwidth memory, or HBM, is now being integrated into many FPGA platforms, including Xilinx Alveol boards and Intel Stratix boards. The reason is that HBM boards provide an order of magnitude higher memory bandwidth compared to previous FPGA boards. Both Stratix 10 MX boards and Alveol U280 HBM boards provide 32 pseudo channels each with about 13 GB per second of memory bandwidth. Add that to the reconfigurability and energy efficiency of FPGAs and the programming support from high-level synthesis tools, FPGA HBM board is supposed to be the ultimate solution for memory-bound applications. Well, or is it? We implemented some memory-bound applications using HLS on Alva U280. You can see that we obtained a high memory bandwidth around 13 GB per second for kernels that can be computed in each pseudo channels independently. But for applications that read or write from multiple PCs, we found that the effective bandwidth is quite low. So why is this happening? To find out the reason, let's first look at the architecture of Alveol U280. Each pseudo channel in HBM is connected to the memory controllers, and the user logic, or kernels, communicate through XE interface. There are 32 XE masters and 32 pseudo channels, and when an XE master wants to communicate with faraway PCs, it uses the built-in crossbar and the lateral connection between the unit switches. But you can also see that the links between the unit switches are shared among multiple XE masters. So when multiple processing elements, or PEs, access multiple PCs, the shared links become the bottleneck. The second reason can be found in the limited HPM support in HLS. This is the code from bucket sort, where each bucket is stored in a PC. You can see in lines 15 to 20 that the input is being sent to a bucket depending on the incoming data's bucket ID. The problem is that the data may come in any random order, and the data may be sent to a totally different PC in the next iteration. As a result, HLS conservatively assume an XE burst length of only one, and the effective bandwidth is significantly reduced. To solve this problem, we propose HBM Connect, a high-performance customized interconnect for HBM FPGA boards. We present HLS-compatible optimization techniques to increase the throughput of XE bus masters and switching elements, we also introduce a high-performance customized crossbar to replace the built-in crossbar, and we find the design point with the best uh, bandwidth resource trade-off. I will now explain the two applications we use for case study. The first application is the bucket sort. We read unsorted data from an input PC and classify them into different output buckets based on the values of the keys. Each output bucket is stored in a single HBM PC, and we assume that there is a second stage sorting performed independently on each bucket. Several bucket PEs may send their keys to the same PC, so there is an all-to-all -all communication on the right interconnect of the sorter. The read is just a one-to-one -one connection. The second application is merge sort. In this case, we assume that sorting has already been performed inside a PC and will perform inter-PC merge sort. Uh, so in this case, an all-to-all -all interconnect architecture is required on the read. Now let's look at the design space of HBN Connect 
and the problem we are going to solve. HBN Connect has two key components between the PEs and the built-in crossbar. The first one is the custom crossbar or CX bar. The purpose is to reduce the traffic in the built-in crossbar. Um, we can uh, explore the number of stages being deployed. The second component is the AXI burst buffer or A buff. Its role is to increase the bus burst length. Uh, we can change the size of the buffer. We make the following assumptions. We assume we are working on a memory bound application and the kernel is written in a data flow style with streaming FIFOs and data is read or written in a sequential address. We solve the problem of given the data transfer size between all PEs and PCs, find the design space of custom crossbar stages and the AXI burst buffer size that maximizes the bandwidth squared overload. Um, this metric uh, is inspired by the traditional area delay square product and tries to maximize the effective bandwidth while using as small resource as possible. Uh, we have the square term on the bandwidth because we think that the effective bandwidth is more important than the resource consumption for memory bound applications. The LUT term uh, may be replaced with flip-flops or BRAM uh, depending on the bottleneck resource of the PEs. Let's look at each component in more details. First, we'll see the benchmarking result of the built-in crossbar and try to increase the effective bandwidth with the customized one. With HLS micro benchmarks, we measure the maximum bandwidth and the latency of each PC. You can see that the bandwidth is similar in read and write, and the memory latency is much longer in memory reads. Each memory transaction requires an initial overhead of the memory latency, so a short memory ac burst access leads to low effective bandwidth in HLS programming. Next, let's look at how the effective bandwidth reduces when we increase the number of PCs accessed by each AXI masters. We increase the number of PCs being accessed from 2 to 16. The test result shows that the maximum effective bandwidth rapidly decreases with more PCs being accessed. This is due to the contention in the lateral connection. In order to overcome the limitation of the built-in crossbar, we inserted a custom one. We first implemented the custom crossbar in a fully connected network, but we found it very difficult to route. So we decided to use a multi-stage crossbar composed of 2x2 two two switches. Among many different topologies, we chose the butterfly network. The reason is that we can send data across many hops of AXI masters with just first few stages. Uh, so it leads to good LUT bandwidth trade-off. When we implemented a 2x2 two two switch in HLS, the average throughput turned out to be only 1.5 elements per cycle for two output ports. A typical 2x2 two two switch can send both input data to the output ports only if the two data's destination ports are different. If they are the same, it can produce only one output. So we propose what we call a mux demux switch. The idea is to decompose a 2x2 two two switch into simple operations that can be performed in parallel. Depending on the output PC address, a demux module stores the incoming data in the corresponding buffer. At the same time, a mux module collects the data in round robin. As long as the consecutive length of data for a particular output port is less than the buffer size, this switch can produce almost two output elements per cycle. So basically, we are trading off buffer with performance. This is the uh, resource and the throughput comparison result. 
uh, to our surprise, the LUT and flip-flop consumption of a typical switch and a MUX DMUX switch is pretty similar. In a typical switch, uh, we have to compare two inputs for destination port conflict on every cycle, and this requires a very complex control circuit in HLS. A MUX DMUX switch decomposes this into four simpler operations. So overall, resource consumption is still comparable. In terms of throughput, uh, a MUX DMUX switch clearly outperforms a typical switch as expected. Now let's look at the second key component of HBN Connect, the AXI burst buffer. In the conventional HLS coding style, we can have each PE directly access a single AXI master, and each AXI master will access any PC using the built-in crossbar. But in the bucket sort, two consecutive key may have a different destination PC. As a result, HLS tools were not able to automatically infer burst access. This leads to a low effective bandwidth problem. An intuitive solution to this problem is to use a FIFO-based burst buffer for each PC. We reserve a BRAM-based FIFO for each destination PC, send the data to the corresponding FIFO one by one, and when we have enough, send the data to the PC in a burst. But we found that this approach creates new problems. We typically need a burst length of around 32 to saturate the maximum bandwidth, but BRAM has a minimum depth of 512, so the 54 burst buffer will be underutilized. The greater problem is that this architecture scatters data to multiple FIFOs and then again gathers the data to a single function. This complicates the PNR process. Due to the high resource usage and the routing complexity, we were not able to route this design. So we have three problems at hand, AXI burst access problem, BRAM underutilization problem, and FIFO scatter gather problem. We propose a solution to solve all of these problems. The idea is to share the BRAM as a burst buffer for many different destination PCs. We call this HLS virtual buffer. This is the uh, architecture diagram. We partitioned a physical FIFO into multiple virtual FIFOs. When a single data comes in, it is written to one of the buffer space designated for each PC. When we have a large number of, of data in a virtual buffer, it is written to a PC in a burst. We also have a separate control signal to pass the burst length and the destination PC information. The implementation is fully compatible with HLSC without the need for RTL. I won't go into details, but what this code is doing is at every cycle, it reads and input data and writes to one of the buffers. At the same time, it reads the data from the buffer and bursts right to each PC. And at the start of each burst, it sends the transfer information in a control signal. Let's look at the comparison data. HLS virtual buffer uses fewer BRAMs than the FIFO burst buffer because it shares the buffer space among many different PCs. Moreover, it uses a smaller number of LUTs and flip-flops because it shares a single physical FIFO. Using a single physical FIFO also eases the PNR process. As a result, we obtained a much higher effective bandwidth compared to the conventional direct access HLS coding style. You can also see that the effective bandwidth increases with larger buffer size until about 32 or 64. One problem of using the HLS virtual buffer is that it is difficult for most users to make a correct implementation. We could do a source-to-source -source transformation, like shown here, 
or HLS vendors could also provide their own abstraction for virtual buffers in the future HPM HLS tools. I'll present the rest of the experimental result. We have already seen the effect of enlarging the HLS virtual buffer size, so here we'll see what happens when we change the number of custom crossbar stages. Uh, we fixed the HLS virtual buffer size to 64, uh, for clear comparison. As we add more custom crossbar stages, we can reduce the traffic through the shared lateral connections and achieve higher effective bandwidth. Uh, when we completely replace the built-in crossbar with the custom one, the effective bandwidth approaches the maximum bandwidth possible. Compared to the baseline implementation, uh, there is about 3x improvement. In terms of resource, uh, we generally need more LUTs and flip-flops with more custom crossbar stages because we use more switches. But the, effect, but the bandwidth improvement is far greater than the increased resource. Uh, since we prioritize on the bandwidth improvement with the uh, square term, we can see that the best design points in terms of bandwidth square over LUT or flip-flops is reached by adding two or three stages of custom crossbar. In terms of VRAM, having more custom crossbar stages decreases the number of output PCs being accessed per AXE master. So the VRAM usage may reduce depending on the minimum VRAM depths. In this particular bucket sort application, uh, we don't need to differentiate the data as long as they are sent to the correct bucket. So we made application-specific optimization of reusing the built-in burst buffer and further reduce the VRAM usage. Uh, as a result, the best design point in terms of bandwidth square over VRAM is reached when the built-in crossbar is fully replaced with the custom crossbar. Let's look at the bandwidth squared over resource metrics in both dimensions. The y-axis is the number of custom crossbar stages and the x-axis is the first buffer size. As we have seen in the previous slide, adding few custom crossbar stages greatly improve the effective bandwidth while consuming only a few lots. Also, completely replacing the built-in crossbar is a good choice in terms of VRAM because you only need to write to a single output PC. Uh, we can also see that a small burst buffer is not competitive because the burst length is too short. Long burst length is not competitive either since we're both reading and writing and will be limited to the half of the maximum bandwidth. Let's look at the merge sort where we applied optimization on the read interconnect. The overall values are higher in, in merge sort since baseline read bandwidth is six times slower than the baseline write bandwidth, and we have a square term. The bandwidth square over LUT metric reaches the peak at the burst length around 128 to 256. It's longer than uh, 32 to 64 in bucket sort. This is because the HPM read latency is relatively longer than write latency, and the read operation requires a longer burst length to saturate the effective bandwidth. For BRAM, the peak is reached at the shorter burst lengths because larger burst lengths a buffer requires more BRAMs. Uh, similar to bucket sort, having a few custom crossbar stages reduces ladder connection traffic and improves the bandwidth. As an ongoing work, we are in the process of extending to other benchmarks and making HPN Connect easy to use. In a couple months, it will be released as an automatic interconnect generator based on HLS C++ template functions. HPN Connect has been developed to answer the question of how do we fully exploit the FPGA HPN boards with high-level synthesis? We propose HLS virtual buffer for increased burst lengths with small resource usage, a demux mux switch to increase the throughput of 2x2 two two switches, and a custom crossbar to increase the effective bandwidth lost in the built-in crossbar. Um, this concludes my talk, and uh, thank you for your attention. 
uh, please come to my session if you have any questions.